These three scientists against a single parasite. Adrian Nayer had the idea. Hans Peter Beck and Wolfgang Meyer are supervising his project. Their research is still in its early phases, but they hope one day to successfully fight malaria. Why malaria? Because there still isn't much broad-based research and industry doesn't have a vested interest in it. So I feel that the university lab is a good place to test things out. Adrian came up with the idea, talked to me about it, and it sounded very clever. I thought we could and should pursue it. We hope it will work, but we're not 100 percent sure that it will. Part of the research is being done at the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute in Basel. The scientists are focusing on the malaria vectors and parasites. The mosquito lab is bathed in warm light, and the humidity is literally tropical. Hans-Peter Beck has been investigating infected mosquitoes for some time. This type of mosquito carries Plasmodium falciparum, a common type of malaria parasite that's responsible for most malaria deaths worldwide. The single-celled organism looks like a blue squiggle under the microscope. In humans, it attacks its victim's red blood cells, the erythrocytes. The parasite has developed mechanisms that allow it to adhere to the capillary walls. If we could prevent this, we could prevent the symptoms of the disease. And if we could prevent the parasite from invading erythrocytes, we would prevent it from proliferating. My plan was to try to use the kind of nanostructures we work with to see if we could apply nanotechnology and polymer chemistry to find a solution. For the last four years, Adrian Nayer's research in the chemistry department at Basel University has been directed at confusing the parasites. He does so first by creating mixtures of polymers. The ingredients he uses are fairly simple, but achieving the desired result is highly complex. He wants to create vesicles, artificial bubble-like structures that are so tiny they're invisible to the naked eye. The idea is for the bubbles, which he calls nanomimics, to resemble human blood cells. This is supposed to trick the parasite because it sees what looks like a normal blood cell. It doesn't have a brain, it doesn't think, I will invade this blood cell, it simply adheres to it. So theoretically it adheres to our structure too. If the process is efficient, then we can block the parasite. That was the basic idea and we've achieved it. The parasites, highlighted in green, aren't approaching the real blood cells, but the artificial vesicles. Once inside, they're unable to proliferate, and so they die off. Crucially, however, the bubbles must not measure more than two ten thousandths of a millimeter. If the nanostructures were too big and you injected them into an organism, they wouldn't circulate in the blood. But in the case of malaria, that's what we need to happen. The vesicles form successfully, but nano-expert Wolfgang Meyer knows there are still many unanswered questions. If you want to use them as an active substance, then you need to know how stable they are, how long can they be stored. And if you inject them or use them as medication, how long will it take for them to decompose? Once the laboratory research is finished, the scientists will start running tests on mice and humans. Even if it works perfectly, it will be years before it goes to market. That's just the way it is. We hope we can get results that are constructive, and that's a time-consuming process you need to be committed to. With ingenuity and persistence, the Basel scientists may have come up with a truly new way of tackling malaria.